Hello everyone and welcome back to part 4 of the Netcode for Game Objects series. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so and if you have any questions on the video or would like to come hang out, the links for the Discord and Patreon are in the video's description. Okay, so in the last video we took a look at the client network transform and the concept of interpolation. In this video, we're going to take a look at using a server authoritative movement for our player, and we're also going to change to use the new input system. I haven't got too much experience using the new input system, so the implementation will be pretty basic, but I'll put together a comprehensive guide on future, and if that interests you, then keep a lookout for that video. Finally, before we get into this one, I've had some feedback about wanting to understand how to use cameras in multiplayer. I won't be covering that in this video, but we'll take a look at using Cinemachine and virtual cameras over the network in the next video. Okay, so we're over here in Unity and the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is open up my package manager and we're gonna to need to get that new input system. So you can filter here for Unity registry and then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna look for the input system. I'm gonna click install on this. If you've been following along with this project the same as I have, you'll be using the old input system. So when you go to install this, it's gonna tell you that it needs to first disable the old API and then also restart the project. You'll probably find it also makes you install it twice so just hit yes on this, it's gonna restart your project and then we'll go and install it again. Okay, so that's reopened my project now and it has actually installed it for me, that's great. So we're gonna close that one down and inside of our project before we do anything, I'm just gonna create a new folder and I'm just gonna call that input actions and we'll open that one there. Okay, so we aren't actually gonna put anything in there yet. We're gonna to go to edit and project settings just to see what it's done. If you open up the input manager, you'll see here that we've got, this is where you would originally have set up the input for unityengine.input. Um, but because we've switched over to the input system package manager, we're now using this here. And we can create a settings asset here, but I'm actually gonna create one manually. So we'll close that down. It's just to show that we're definitely on the new input system. And we're gonna create a input actions. And I'm just gonna call this player input. And if we double click on player input, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create an action. I'm gonna call this one player. And it's important what you name these ones because when you wanna reference them in your code, you need to use the names that you set inside of here. So we're gonna take this action here and I'm gonna rename it to movement. I'll just expand it to see what's in here currently. We'll delete out that no binding for now. We're gonna change this to a pass through and we're gonna make that a vector two. So movement is controlled by a vector two and then I'll add a up, down, left, right composite to this. You can leave that as 2D vector, that's fine. And we're just gonna be setting these. So you can click this little listen button and we're setting up to our W key. We're gonna set down to our S key, left to our A key and right to our D key. Okay, that's pretty much all we wanna do with this here. Uh, we will probably come back to this one in the next video when we set our cameras and we'll do something about looking around. But for now, that's all that we're really going to need. So I'll close out of that. Oh, we'll hit, sorry, cancel. Obviously save the asset and then close out of that. And now if you click on your player input, you'll see here we have this generate C-sharp class. We're going to tick that and we're just going to name this. We'll change the location here to probably just be inside of our scripts because we're adding a script in here and save that, that's okay. And we're gonna name this, uh, we'll call this my player input. It's okay, just with a capital M. That's probably not the best naming convention, but that it's fine for this. So as always, I wanna just create a different prefab so we still have our existing ones. I think this time I might make a copy of my player, so just control D, and I'm just gonna call this server player, that's fine. So this will be my server authoritative player. So we can see he has a network object. We aren't gonna worry about any of the capsule colliders or anything like that, but I will remove this player script because that was how we were doing the RPC ones in the first video. And instead, I'm going to be creating a brand new script. We're gonna create a new folder again, and I think I will just call this server auth movement because we have the client auth movement folder there. And in here, we're gonna make a script called server player movement. And then we'll assign that to that prefab. So we'll open that guy up. And we'll add to that our server player movement. And just to give this guy a little bit of difference between the two of them, so we know we've definitely spawned the other one, I might just make a little capsule. Let's give him arms, I think. That would be kind of cute. So we got a capsule going. I'm just gonna call this arm. So we'll move this guy over, and then we'll probably shrink that down to, let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and 0 0.2. 
So he's got these little weird arms going on. That's all right. And then we'll just duplicate that and drag it over to the other side. So that is definitely quite a little weird character, but he's got arms now, so great. <laughs> Now, just before we open this one up as well, we're actually going to need a character controller because we're going to be using the move functions that are available to us in that. So now that we have that, let's open this up. And as always, we're going to be using unity.netcode and we're going to be grabbing that network behavior. In terms of variables, our player is going to need some move speed, a reference to itself, a reference to the character controller and to the player input that we've created. So we're going to create a private float. We'll call that player speed, private transform. We'll call that player transform, a public character controller, because I can just drag that on, which is nice and easy. And we'll call that character controller and then a private my player input that I'll just call player input in here. Now in our start method, we are going to get a new player input. So we'll say new, and then we just need to enable it. Now let's break down what we're going to have to do here, because there's a few steps. Effectively, we're going to have to be able to read our player's movement, store that into a variable. Then we're going to have to determine if we are player or server, and then we'll have to basically move if server, request move if player. <clears throat> and to do that, we need a move function and we need a request move. And remember when we're requesting moves to the server, those are server RPCs. So we'll create two move methods. The first one is going to be a private void move. This will be the server's movement. We'll take a vector two and we'll call that input. And we'll write that one in a minute. And we're going to need a second one that is going to be a server RPC. And remember from the first video, whenever we create a server RPC, it needs to have server RPC at the end of it. And you're going to be a vector two again with an input. Okay, the first thing we're going to need to do is store our vector two uh, in a move input that is basically just going to be reading from the player input the action that the player person is taking. So it's player movement dot read value, and we're reading the vector two that we had in here. Now, if this line confuses you, it's purely just because this is reading it from the player action in here. And the reason I was able to use dot player dot movement is because I've created this called player and that called movement. And then we're using a pass through a vector two. So I'm just reading that vector two value. Next, we need to determine if we're the player or the server. So we're going to say if is server and is local player then that means we're the server, so we're allowed to move. So I'm going to call move, and we'll pass in that move input that I have. So we've stored our move input, we're passing it here. If we're the server, we're allowed to make the movement. So this will be doing the movement, and then this will be requesting the movement. So else if is client and is local player, then we're going to be requesting our movement. So that will be this move server RPC that we've got here. And again, we'll pass in our move input. I'm just going to delete or move these two lines up actually. So we've got that there and we've got that there. And now let's fill out these last two methods. Now this one's going to be doing the actual movement. So I'm going to create a vector three that we're going to call calc move. And this is going to take that input, the X and Y, and then basically multiply it by our games transform either right or forward. That will make sense in a second. So I'm going to say underscore input dot x multiplied by player transform dot right plus input y multiplied by player transform dot forward. So this is calculated the movement that we want to do. Now we basically just need to apply that. And the easiest way to do that is to use our character controller move function. We're just going to pass in the move that we calculated, multiply it by our player's speed and then multiply it by time dot delta time. That will actually handle the movement. From the server side, we just want to make sure that we call to the server to do the movement. So we're just going to say move, and we'll pass in that underscore input again. 
And that's it. Now we've got a server authoritative movement. So whenever we're the server, we're allowed to move. Whenever we're the player, we request via an RPC the server to make a movement for us. The server receives it and then it does the movement. Okay, so now we're going to jump back into Unity. I'll close that down and I'll jump back onto my I'll jump back onto my prefab of my server player and there's a few variables we should set up. So I said we had a character controller. We'll just drag that one on there. And I've set that to a private float. I might just serialize this, serialize this field so we can still keep it as private and the transform as well. And that way they get exposed in the inspector. So we've got our transform and our speed. I'm going to make the speed. I don't really know how fast it's going to go. So I'm just going to make it 60 and we'll sort of see how it goes. And I'll drag my transform on. Now there's one other thing that we need and that's obviously the network transform. So remember that the network transform itself here is server authoritative. So it won't allow any movement from the client. And in the last video, we did the client network transform. So we're going to maintain using the server network transform. I'll keep all these values for now. Uh, at the moment, we aren't changing its scale or rotation. We're only changing its position. So I could untick all of these. Actually, I will untick all of these. There we go. And we'll leave interpolation on. That's fine. And we'll build our game. I'll add to this one a new folder that I'm just going to call 0.06 server movement without cameras because we'll do cameras in the next video and select okay we can close that one down and i'll just hit start here open up the folder that it's made and let's get a few instances of this going so we've got one two and i will create this one as the server create this one as our client oh I can see I've got a mistake here. This is why I'm glad we create different characters because this is our cube character first. So let's just go back. In our network manager, we need to be using our server player and then add to this our server player as well. Save that and let's build again. Okay, now that that's built, let's start the game and we'll go to our folder and start a few instances again. That can be server, client, he has the arms, that's good. And he can move around, that's great. You can see he's moving on the server. Let's get a second client in there. And these are all moving on their own. That's good. And the server's not able to move anyone because it's not the local player of any of these. Well, that's great. We've just done the server side movement. Okay, so in the next video, guys, we're gonna be taking a look at changing this camera because obviously that one point of view is not very uh, useful and it'll be looking at using Cinemachine and virtual cameras to do this. As always I'd like to take the time to thank our Patreon supporters. In the Diamond tier we have Kendro, Emerald tier we have Pat, Silver tier we have Lanky Moose. The support you guys provide really helps out so I appreciate it and if you would like to sign up it is patreon.com slash Thanks guys.